Hi everybody and welcome back to the basketball edition of the huddle. I'm Ruth Lang here with sports editor Mike Brown and uh, the season is winding down for the girls but um, in good news the Alliance girls snapped their losing streak with a 10 point win over Akron North on Monday. Um, I think the secret to that was using some of their smaller players mm -hmm. relying on that quickness. Right and Caitlin Daniels had a big game for Alliance Ruth as she had us all year. She's been one of their leaders all year. Had a great game and it's good to see them get a win against Akron North. An impressive win for the Alliance girls and I think they've made a lot of strides this year so I think they've, they've really set the foundation for future years for Alliance girls basketball. Mm -hmm. Also continuing their winning streak, West Branch, mm -hmm. ninth and 10th straight wins. Um, Saturday was versus Ravenna, that was their ninth straight. And then Monday versus South Range, that was their 10th straight. Um, and they got to get in some of their bench um, right. in that second game there. Which is good. as you know, Obviously, West Branch's girls' goals are probably a little different than some of the other area teams. I mean, they have goals of getting to Columbus, and I, th I think that's a realistic goal. And, uh, you know, obviously Melinda Trimmer had a big game again Monday night. She had uh, good games against Ravenna and South Range. Uh, Kaylee Manning continues to be a, a really nice addition for them scoring-wise. She's really emerged as their number three scorer this year, which they really needed. Uh, and, I, and they're up to fourth in the state poll. The Division II uh, state poll came out today, and they're up to fourth. So, you know, I think everything's setting up very well for mm -hmm. the West Branch girls, Ruth. And Marlington had a victory on Saturday over Canton mm -hmm. South, but then followed that up, unfortunately, with a loss on Monday um, to Southeast. Right, and Southeast girls are having a, a good season. So, you know, that's, you know, that's, I'm sure Marlington's disappointed to lose that game, but Southeast girls are pretty good. I mean, they're ranked fairly high in the upcoming tournament, and they've had a good season. The Marlington girls have done a good job. I, they've, they've had a lot of injuries. You know, they've lost Allie Rogers to injury for the year. She was their leader. And it's tough when you lose your leader, and especially during the season, and you have to change on the fly and, and adjust your your uh, rotation, things like that. It's really difficult. So I, I salute them. I think they've done the best with what they've had after they lost their leader. Mm -hmm. Also battling the losses, Sebring girls mm -hmm. continuing to get a couple losses. Right, yeah. They went to uh, Lisbon on Monday night and lost a uh, inner tri county league game to the Blue Devils. And, uh, you know, we said it all year. I, I think... They, they really miss the graduation of Kelsey Settle in the middle. They've got the great outside game, still two great players, uh, but just not enough. It's, it's been in a lot of games this year. Hopefully that'll, you know, that'll change in the tournament, but it's, it's been a tough you know, final part of the season, regular season for the Sebring girls. It's a tough time in Sebring because the boys are getting losses as right. well. They lost to yep. Louisville. Uh, senior night last Friday, yeah. and then McDonald on Tuesday. Right, and and going back to losing a leader like the Marlington girls, the Sebring boys have lost their leader. Robbie Rouse is is uh, out for the season with an injury, and that's really hurt them because Sebring was playing great basketball. You know, I covered probably their best win. They beat McDonald earlier in the season with him, and uh, I know he was in the twenties that night, had a really good game, and then he went down for the season with an injury and. And I believe they've only won one or two games since that injury. Uh, so it really makes it – when you lose your leader, uh, I mean, there's just no way to compensate for that at the high school level because you you don't have a – like at the college level, you have a lot of players uh, where you can compensate at the high school level. It's tough. And West Branch lost to Canfield on mm -hmm. Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, and, again, that's something where, you know, West Branch has given up a lot of points this year on defense. I mean, they uh, – I, I think they're probably giving up in the high 60s per game as far as points allowed. And it's hard to win a lot of games when you have to outscore somebody that way. When you're giving up 60-some points a game, you really have to be on offensively to, to win games. And, and that was kind of the case uh, Tuesday night against Canfield. Canfield's got a, a good basketball team. I believe they're 13-5 and five now. Uh, and they're coached by a West Branch grad and Todd McElroy there. So I'm sure that was a special win for him. Mm -hmm. Now, Marlington upset Salem, who previously beat them in overtime mm -hmm. earlier this season. And they also defeated West Branch on last Friday night. So they're seeing a little bit of a – they've got a little bit of a – A little bit of a role. They're, on, they, they're a little bit of a role right now because I believe they've come back. They had a little bit of a slump in the midway point of the season. But they've come back. I believe they won their last three games, Ruth. And, uh, and I think they're a quality team because they play nine or ten players every game. And I think as you get into the tournament, that's really going to help because not many teams can do that. Uh, and it shows, I think, as they've gone through the season, I think they're fresher than a lot of teams that are only playing five or six guys because, you know, it's a long season now, 22 regular season games. That's a long time to play basketball. And uh, Marcus DeVise had a good game for the Dukes uh, in their most recent win. So, you know, I think they're set for the tournament coming up. And Alliance also coming off some wins, defeated mm -hmm. uh, NBC rival Minerva on, at home on Tuesday. Right. And they had... 
um, J. Ron Brackett right. with 35 points. Wow, Tell me that, about that's that. amazing. I mean, that's just, you know, he's one of the best area players and uh, continues to get better and better. And uh, I don't think anybody's had a game like that anywhere in the area this year. I mean, congratulations to him. That's just a phenomenal effort. It really is. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously we'll chronicle that all the way through. Mm -hmm. But what are our schedules looking like coming up? Tournaments? or rounding out the season, sorry, for the girls and then leading into tournaments. Next right. Week. Well, on Wednesday night, this will be the last, uh, for, for the NBC girls basketball teams anyway, uh, Wednesday night will be their last uh, games of the se regular season. And the Alliance girls go to Carrollton for an NBC game against the Warriors. Uh, Louisville is at Marlington in a local rivalry. Uh, and Minerva goes to West Branch uh, in another NBC game. And then on Thursday night, the uh, Sebring High School girls, uh, they will go to United Local to play an inter -tri -tri county league game against the Golden Eagles. And then as far as Friday night basketball this week, Ruth, we've got Alliance going to Louisville. Marlington will take the long trek to Canton South to play the Wildcats. Uh, Carrollton goes to Minerva, and West Branch goes to Salem. That's always a, a bitter rivalry between those two NBC teams. Okay, and we'll be there for coverage of that. But until next time, we'll see you on the court.